Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Rahul Kullar, uh, former chairman of uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. Uh, he stepped down just a few months ago and uh, he carried with him uh, the reputation of uh, being one of the toughest uh, no-nonsense and most decisive uh, regulators uh, we've had for the sector. And uh, we've called him for, uh, for this discussion, especially to understand uh, the digital India landscape uh, from, uh, from him. Uh, he's, he's had a, a very good ringside view of uh, the digital India, uh, the, the whole uh, notion of digital India that this government is trying to push for. Welcome to, uh, to our show, uh, Mr. Rahul Kullar. Uh, so you, <clears throat> you have studied digital India uh, very closely as a regulator. You understand uh, its complexities. Uh, uh, you recently wrote a very interesting article in the Indian Express where you argued that very high, very good, well-intentioned uh, project, but, uh, but far too many gaps in the way it's being implemented. Uh, uh, and uh, so, so that's partly the reason why we wanted to, to have you in our studios and just to tell us what are the two, three key things that, uh, that, you, f that you find uh, really lacking in the way uh, this whole Digital India project is being approached? Uh, of course, you've, you've, you've said that it, in your article, you've said it's overweening in its ambition. ambition. Uh, and ambition is not matched by effort on the ground uh, on, on various counts. So what, what would be your, some of your key uh, issues that, uh, that you've raised? Uh, you've put it better than I did. Uh, yeah. It's exactly that. Overweening ambition not matched by necessary homework. Um, see, the three or four big components of Digital India, one is infrastructure, which refers to actually laying a pipe. Okay providing spectrum, both access and backhaul, mm -hmm. providing towers. Mm -hmm. Now, these are when you say pipe, you mean broadband? The, bro yeah. the, the pipe. See, basically what happens is you need a pipe, a big pipe, mm -hmm. which is capable of carrying very large amounts of data very fast. Mm -hmm. Because broadband is essentially the delivery of fast speed access to the internet. Exactly. Now, if and speed, any, speed is of essence. Speed is of essence. And you, you've said that we are still talking about uh, to, kilobits, kilobits and the world has moved on to megabits in right. terms of speed. That's right. Now, the problem is that if any one of these is out of sync, you know, if you have a large pipe but not enough spectrum, mm -hmm. or you have a small pipe and large spectrum, mm -hmm. or you have access spectrum but you don't have back, then... Backhaul spectrum, yeah. Backhaul spectrum. And basically, the thing collapses to what is the least efficient part of it. And everything is determined by that. Okay. Now, on that, our track record has been far from happy. Mm. One, we are just not augmenting the supply of spectrum, access spectrum sufficiently. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two, we are just not being able to execute the national optic fiber network on time. Meaning, in three years, from 12 to 14, mm when I spoke about it in September last year, uh, they had achieved 2% of target. In fact, in the first year of this government, we barely achieved about 10% of the... Not even 15, that. Yeah, not even that. 10% of the then target. And when, 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 you know, when, when the papers started talking about it, and everybody else started, the department scaled back its targets. But even those scaled back targets were not met. Not met, yeah. This now, is like taking broadband to panchayat le level, right? The panchayat connecting level. panchayats Connect, around the country. Correct, connecting panchayats. So you have a very big problem in terms of physically delivering the pipeline. Mm. In urban areas, the you problem... Give us an idea of what is the target and just less than 2% you should there's achieve. There's about 250,000 villages were to be done in three years by end of 2014. Mm -hmm. I think by the end of 2014, we had about 20,000 villages done. Okay. And that too after the government cracked the whip, otherwise mm -hmm. you are nowhere there. Okay. Now, that's one part of the problem. The second part of the problem is in urban areas. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in urban areas, if you're going to deliver fast speed broadband, you need two things. Either you need fiber to the home mm -hmm. for wireline broadband. Mm -hmm. And if it's got to be wireless broadband, even then you need much stronger pipes, far more towers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And much, much more spectrum. Okay. Now, if none of this is available... Which is the case now? Meaning you're having call drops because of this problem. Yeah, and we're having the... Uh, we're seeing the Prime Minister personally intervening where, where this should be fixed so at the level of... It's a uh, routine, routine matter. Yeah, routine. It should be fixed at the level of the regulator. And, and he's intervened twice. And now they've given a 15 days deadline. Uh, uh, as, we, as we speak, the, we are actually... The 15 day deadline is still running. It's so. running out of time. Yeah, yeah I think... I mean, to be honest, and that was the point of what I wrote in the paper, these do not have quick fixes. You can't do them in, snap your fingers and it's done. And it's called the dropping why? Primarily because of two reasons, insufficient spectrum and insufficient towers. Okay. I mean, ask yourself, mm. has anybody in the rural areas complained about call drops? Yeah, sure. It's and if you read the tri paper, what are they relying on? It's an urban phenomenon. It's, they've relied on data from Mumbai and Delhi. Mm -hmm. So what you're really seeing is a very urban-centric articulation mm -hmm. of a problem. I'm not saying the problem doesn't exist. It's, it does. Mm. But it is a problem where additional investment by the telcos will not alone solve it. You need other things to fall in place. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true for broadband. So that's one part of digital India, which is uh, this thing. The second component is, look, the budget required to execute digital India is 120,000 crores, roughly. roughly yeah. Now, you want to get it done in four, four years, 1915 to 1990. That yeah. means 30,000 crores a year. Yeah. At the moment, you've written only 3,000 crores being... We have allocated. never spent more than 3,000 crores in a year. So we are spending 10 times less, and our, our targets are 10 times more than what we can achieve. Correct. So what you're going to have is the two separate problems. One is, does the system have the absorptive capacity to take 30,000 crores and actually implement the project? Okay. And the second question is that... When you say system, you mean... The, the executing agencies. Executing agencies. Do See, we have a spending infrastructure? Like spending infrastructure. Can it actually do that? Okay. And the second problem is that, all right, if that, forget that. Do you seriously think that the Ministry of Finance can, you know, actually afford 10 times the allocation it's ever done in the last month? Yeah. So it's going to be a, both a resource availability problem and an absorptive capacity problem. Yeah. My perception I think it's the absorptive capacity which will trump resources, which means the finance ministry will always have the excuse. Mm. That they're not able to they're spend. They're not able to spend it, so why, what's the point of giving it to them? Mm. Now, that reality is what you've witnessed so far. So what gives you the confidence that something has magically changed and it will happen tomorrow? The third component of the problem is that at the end of the day, Broadband or internet use is demand driven, yeah. right? So if I'm in the urban areas and I want fast speed broadband to download a movie, a picture, uh, uh, a lecture, anything, that demand drives the, yeah. drives the telcos into providing the service. Now, if you're talking about e-governance and delivery of other sorts of services. At the rural level. So where is the rural demand? The question is, where is the A, where is the rural demand? And B, that rural demand is derived from the services that are being delivered. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now ask yourself the following question. BSNL today has a pipe running into 96% of our districts and 80% of our blocks. Are all, they all have Pipes coming right up to that point. Okay. But they've not translated into uh, broadband demand. Why? Mm -hmm. There's no spectrum constraint. There's no pipe carrying constraint. Mm -hmm. The reason is that, sim simply put, if I have to buy an internet service, mm -hmm. it must be of use to me. Okay. So if I'm living in the rural areas, does it actually help me in terms of dealing with my government? 
डज इट हेल्प मी सॉल्व अ बैंकिंग प्रॉब्लम डज इट प्रोवाइड मी एजुकेशन फैसिलिटीज सो यू सेंग द सर्विसेज आर नॉट इन प्लेस and for services to be in place you need necessary applications those ne- without those necessary applications mm. building the pipe is like building so the, a road to nowhere so the government uh, state governments need to build Me- no it's not only state governments and that's the and central and state governments both together together what I, the point i'm trying to make is this if it is the case that you want actually service delivery at your doorstep so you're saying that the minister, center and states together need to build service delivery applications correct for this is broadband to be used at the district and block level absolutely correct and that Now, that hasn't happened well we've heard of e governance for the last 10 years please tell me one national application that is in place here it isn't my concern is twofold so where should the government start on this yeah sir? i i want to make that point first you should not rely on whom what i call the it boffins in government mm. sorry their track record is not particularly in far from satisfactory far from satisfactory second you have to co-opt as you correctly said state governments and others okay. third why Poor are we so, uh, themselves yes. no not for, let me give mm. you an example mm. why are we not using our private sector okay they provide solutions to the rest of the world mm mm-hmm. you mean the infosys and the the infosys the tcs and the tcs yeah. why can't we ask them to do it okay mm. one example second example mm. supposing i actually want to deliver an e education program mm. or a modest e health program which has been done in countries yeah. like zambia yeah. Yeah. you need to customize your application okay. to local needs to local languages so we need to yeah to now that requires effort studying the customer uh, studying the customer studying the profile yeah. getting the right professionals in okay. if it's e health you have to get doctors involved if we'll, it's we'll discuss this in more detail but after a small break please don't go away and keep uh, watching rs tv Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are talking to Rahul Khulla, former chairman of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, on uh, what are the problems uh, uh, that we are encountering with the government's digital India project, very ambitious project. So, uh, so Mr. Khulla, you are you are saying that th- there is also problem of developing uh, uh, applications which which suit the re- requirements of the population of the rural population if they don't have the applications yeah. why do they need the internet so if you want to take e governance to that level panchayat district block level so 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 there is really no thought that has gone into how to go about this uh, by getting stakeholders together including the private sector that you were talking yeah, about yeah i think that to be fair to my colleagues in the department of telecom i think they've thought thought this through mm. recently and i just i think it was in march of the year they actually put together some sort of document they're moving on it now but the pace is way too slow do you think i just had a small idea mr khuller do you think the way the upa cracked the uid problem by creating a separate department with a technocrat nandan nilekani so you you have a software guy a, a a cell at the center a department with a software guy picking his team and then connecting uh, that team connects with different states who have a smaller similar cells you know to i have to look actually, at the i have absolutely no problem with that institutional structure yeah. Yeah. and I you, you can have ex infosys guys or other, ex co-op people yeah, absolutely pcs correct. guys working absolutely there. fine mm-hmm. the critical point is that the existing institutional structure mm-hmm. cannot deliver this so that's what you, uh, okay meaning you have a usof and a, as an appendage of dot mm-hmm. it gives the money to bbnl which is a psu which mm-hmm. gives the money to three more psus mm-hmm. and then what it's designed to fail mm-hmm. it can't succeed anything any alternative would be better the one you are suggesting is to run the program like in mission mode pick somebody and yeah. say look run with it we'll give you the autonomy to do it mm-hmm. i'm fine with that if you don't want to give the autonomy because so much money is involved mm-hmm. design and a variant mm-hmm. but if you do not change the institutional structure this will never get done on the ground okay and the other 
issue that you've pointed out is uh, this whole, uh, essentially you've said that Digital India project is an amalgamation of uh, uh, the no National Knowledge Network, e-governance uh, pro pro project uh, from the previous regime, and the National Optics Fiber Network, right? Now, these three, you're saying that they have to move in tandem. They have to sort of... Uh, Absolutely correct. And and you cannot move them in isolation, mm -hmm. which was part of the problem mm -hmm. happening earlier. But even if they are to move in tandem or in coordination, mm -hmm. this is, it's not merely sufficient to articulate that as a concern. Mm -hmm. You have to redesign institutional and administrative structures mm -hmm. which are capable of delivering it. Second, you have to give responsibility. Okay. Perhaps as you, you mentioned, uh, you know, you need to import an Nandan Nilekani or yeah. whoever. And say, look, this project has to be run in mission mode. It has got to get done. Mm -hmm. My own sense is, look, it's a great project. It must get done. It's required and the Prime Minister is spot on. Mm -hmm. This is the way to reach services. Mm -hmm. Problem. If you do not scale back your ambition mm -hmm. and say, all right, I can't get it done by 2019, but let me make the best effort to get what I can done. Mm -hmm. You will at least get something done. Setting an overambitious target and not reaching, mm -hmm. achieving it, yeah. is only a recipe for disaster because India will then spend the next five years recriminating and doing postmortems of why it didn't get done. Mm -hmm. So my sense is that even now it's not too late mm -hmm. and we must have the candor to accept that yes, this cannot be done in this time profile. Mm -hmm. Let's scale it back a little. Let's try and achieve this. Set reasonable targets, hold people accountable for those targets mm -hmm. and then see what happens. Do you, do you feel that, uh, you, you talked about involving the private sector at least in creating, investing in the necessary infrastructure, because government, as you said, cannot really put all the funds that you need. You need gigantic uh, amounts, right? Now, in the present climate, uh, Mr. Kuller, you've been a regulator. There's a kind of climate of suspicion between that exists between the private sector and the government. On everything that they do, there, there's a, the private sector is seen... Uh, viewed with suspicion, which is understandable because of a certain history. For instance, they want more spectrum. They say that globally people hold uh, upward of 25 uh, megahertz, but 30 megahertz and they, or thereabouts. But in India, uh, spectrum is given in trickles. <laughs> because, essentially because the government does not trust the private sector to be holding excess spectrum. Now, how do you resolve this issue? I, mean, I think I, I, this is also linked to call drops, by the way. Yeah, I, I think you know. Uh, what is the I, logic of rationing spectrum? I have absolutely no answer to that, and I, I think that the DOT can argue till it's blue in its face. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, the spectrum is short. They can keep denying the existence of the problem. Mm -hmm. That does not mean the problem does not exist. That said, the real issue is one of trust. And I think for the last year, there has been a lot of telco bashing going on. Mm -hmm. I think we need to pause and reflect if there are problems, and there are, I'm not arguing that they're not, whether those pertain to availability of spectrum, towers, radiation, and for instance, mm -hmm. call drops and other quality of service parameters. Mm -hmm. We have to look, look at them sort of antiseptically as, you know, what's the problem mm -hmm. and how do we fix the problem? Okay. Pointing f fingers and saying it's your fault, it's his fault, mm -hmm. this does not solve the problem. Yeah. This is not going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. All you will do is some report will come out, some fine will be levied and back to square one. Nothing will happen. Yeah. So you, if you want to solve a problem, your approach has to be far more holistic and far less of this... Uh, I distrust you. It has got, mm -hmm. and this is a serious problem in the telecom sector. I especially on the net neutrality issue. There's a huge distrust of the the telecom operators who actually carry there's, the pipe. That that's correct. There's a distrust of the telecom operators. And I think from the citizens' point of view, that is valid. That is the. 
telecom operators should not be able to get away with, with blue murder. Mm. The point of the matter again is this, there is a problem. If we fix the problem mm. collectively, then we have a solution. If you don't, you leave it as a vacuum mm. and then operators can do whatever they want. So the need for getting the problem addressed mm -hmm. must first be looked at. And please ask yourself, you know, six months ago, seven months ago, there was a huge furor about net neutrality. Mm -hmm. But every day you see breaches of it. One day you're shutting down 100 channels, mm -hmm. next day you're closing down Uber, next day you've got Ola out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a problem for net neutrality because as long as mm -hmm. A service delivery on the net bypasses all on the ground regulations. Mm. There will be a problem. Mm. Now, you can either wait for the problem to rear its head mm. at the time of a crisis and then say, oops, now I need to react to it. Mm. Or you can anticipate some of these problems and start thinking of how you're going to react to them. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think in all these matters, whether it's net neutrality, uh, over-the-top operations, uh, digital India, any of these mm -hmm. call drops, we must not get carried away by emotion. First, analyze what the problem is, co-opt the private sector, co-opt others also, figure out this is the nature of the problem, come to an agreement, and then see how you're going to fix Essentially it. Essentially involve the private sector in, in a spirit of cooperation. Correct, in a spirit of cooperation. If you do it elsewhere, why can't you do it here? Do, do you feel, Mr. Kuller, conceptually, do you feel that uh, you've often said that that building infrastructure, especially taking to rural areas, is a, it will cost a lot of money and government alone cannot do it. So and unless you have infrastructure, nobody benefits, right? Uh, right. You, need, you, need, you need first infrastructure to be able to fight about net neutrality. <laughs> there is no net neutrality if there is no infrastructure, right? In fact, ask yourself the question, mm. if it is the Prime Minister's mm. objective that mm. you reach out to rural India, mm. then what you're really saying is that 80% of your country today mm. is just not connected. Or so, so, not connected so, in terms of for, for this broadband connection, delivery. Yeah, connection to happen, do you think the private sector uh, should also uh, should also subsidize Creation of the infrastructure, government, of course, will subsidize. But private no, there are ways of. I, mean, ways I of have discussed it? it with the private sector, and there are ways of getting around it, which means they can plonk, plonk some money on the table, mm -hmm. and they would do it purely by way of, uh, you know, uh, for for reasons of profit. Mm -hmm. But the point is that if public sector investment is not forthcoming, mm -hmm. or resources are constrained. Mm -hmm. You want to uh, so you have ask, to involve them. Yeah. Correct. Ask yourself the fundamental thing. When in '95 you designed this policy, what was the what is the point? Mm -hmm. You came to the conclusion that the private sector has to be inducted because the government simply does not have the resources to deliver this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fast forward 20 years. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for us to ask ourselves: Should we stump up the entire 120,000 crores, yeah. okay. mm -hmm. or should we? Try at least and see if the private sector can come up with part of that cost. Because what is saved on the margin So in a way, is... yeah, you're coming back to the point of involving them. Yeah. One last question before you leave. Uh, I've always asked you about, you also regulated the media. And you expressed grave concern about media monopolies emerging in the digital age, right? So uh, newspapers as they existed may not exist after 10 years, 15 years. And you also made a very strict recommendation about... Uh, political parties uh, promoting television channels and religious trusts and you said that there should be strict curbs on this. So I, are you sat, I mean, you think the government is looking at this or? Uh, well, to be perfectly honest, neither the last government nor did this. Nor did, nor did uh, this. Nor did this government. And I, in my view, it is absolutely shameful the way uh, political parties are going around launching their own channels. It is very, very bad news for democracy in India, this sort of thing starts happening. Uh, the only thing I'm hopeful uh, of is that much of this is in direct and violent breach of the Supreme Court's orders mm -hmm. uh, when it said that the state should not have okay. any control over the airwaves except for the public broadcaster. So some one fine day, somebody is going to file a public interest litigation. Yeah. 
and then they will be held to pay. Let's hope somebody goes in appeal to the Supreme Court. Thank you very much for talking to us, Mr. Rahul Kullan. Yes, uh, that's all we have in this uh, edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.